Welcome to Soul to Soul Conversations. I am Satori Seals, operating as your soul guider for this podcast. So this is kicking off episode two. And I appreciate everybody showing love on episode one for the initial uh, kickoff for launching this whole Soul to Soul Conversation podcast. Truly appreciate it. Appreciate everyone that went and followed. Uh, those of you that download the first episode and those that gave a brother uh, a good rating. You know, so anyone that's new checking this out, kind of just catching on, please, uh, you know, just show some love, uh, you know, follow and then give a rating. As I understand, you need to do the rating inside the app, the Spotify app, and also, you know, in other different platforms. So officially we're on Deezer, uh, Amazon, um, I believe uh, Pandora, there's something going on with that. And then on YouTube. So just whatever platform that you are, uh, you know, listening, show some love, sign up so that we can get notified, you know, on the next episodes that I begin to share. So, but again, the most important is I want to say thank you. And I appreciate everybody just showing love uh, for the initial kickoff. So this again is episode two. And as we begin to get into this episode, I just want to take time out to really just talk about um, I guess the intention, some of the intentions behind So So Conversation Podcast. I understand as we begin to dive in and go into more episodes, there's a aspect of enriching each other that I love to make sure that comes across. You know, um, that enriching showing itself and people go to get clarity in life, clarity in the situation, clarity about themselves, sparking reconciliation with some things inside themselves, reconciliation inside relationships, you know, much everybody talks about relationship nowadays. It's like you just can't get away from it. I'm looking at it like, okay, it's time to start talking about forgiveness. It's time to start talking about uh, reconciliation. Um, that's get aligned properly. So hopefully, through the Living Soul Guidance System, as I introduced to y'all, that you can begin to see those possibilities inside your life, or begin to witness it with other people that you may know, or even witness um, people experiencing and having that level of breakthrough or that level of healing. Um, from the podcast, you know, that's going out to on the airwaves. So I definitely want to see uh, the spark of people get into a sense of being able to do, you know, self-reflection because there's no growth, there's no change without being able to self-reflect. Um, people be able to tap into uh, the truth. And I don't mean like, oh, my truth. I mean, just really the truth and what's happening in your life, what's happening life in general happening in our situations because when there's truth present then there's a sense of growth a sense of realization to the point to change the cycles that you desire to switch in your life but you can't do that without the sense of truth without a sense of reflection so practically speaking those are definitely some of the intentions that's behind as I meditate and think about the different variety of topics or the, the readings and the soul advice that I'll be you know sharing with y'all through the podcast airwaves but also most important we talk about relationships I definitely want to help spark a level of to broaden our understanding about ourselves and our relationships because it's not one size fit all and so with that in mind one of the attentions that I hold uh, behind this, you know, soul to soul conversation podcast is being able to help uplift and encourage individuals to cross over a level of threshold inside their own limitations of understanding about themselves and relationships to the point to understand that you actually have the freedom to customize relationships around your own soul matrix. And so that's what's very interesting because as you tap in and get, you know, uh, the Living Soul profile reading, stuff like that, you begin to see there's different dynamics to you that's behind your soul, that's behind your experiences in life, behind your relationships, behind your decision making, 
and you begin to understand like yo these these are different variations of myself that that's comfortable for me and so knowing that you now have a level of a degree of acceptance to engage with others to see where it complements match enhance or also empowers you to be like you know we cool but we um you, you know how to properly place the relationship i think nowadays if we have this syndrome going on it, it's all for nothing and it's funny because when you look at the average person and the people that we engage the reality is they're not able to meet everything that you probably need but we're canceling out good relationships i'm not just talking about sexual i'm talking about relationships where you know we're stifling ourselves because we're not recognizing some basic things about the human experience and so we're limiting ourselves so one of the intentions behind the living soul a uh, numerology a uh, soul guidance system is to help broaden us to understand like oh wow there's a there's a variety of combinations that each individual walks in and that combination match with my combination that combination match with someone else's combination it generates a certain reality or a certain experience in the interaction of those with those different combinations and so knowing that that's why i say you know customize your relationships around your soul matrix okay so of course down the road we'll get into that a little more details on that but that's some of the things i want to kind of spark and encourage um as we just start to dive deep okay so today episode two um i already gave everyone a basic intro i introduced you into the living soul uh, soul guidance numerology system so with that in mind i want to venture our focus into what we're going to talk about today and that is the soul in you the soul in you and what i like to do in this episode is to talk about the soul of course but i want to talk about the soul from the aspect of showing how it traces to specific numbers or the numerology or the math behind you and I based upon the soul archetypes that is inside our soul profile. Now for recap, I know I'm not throwing out these different terms and stuff like that. And as we get into more episodes, I'll work hard to clarify or give understanding about each one, each term I use or phrases I use so that um, you can follow okay so just for recap remember there are four numbers that are assigned to you that holds more gravity in your life okay these four numbers are so archetypes these four numbers each single number falls up under a astral archetype in which we reference as the moon archetype so a number fall up under that a sun archetype which another number fall up under that a moon i'm sorry an earth archetype which a number falls up under that and then a living soul archetype and a number will fall up under that now based on these four numbers they can repeat themselves you can see you have triple the same number you got quadruple or you got each number could be a singly different number based upon the number one through nine. There are nine archetypes and each archetype emanates certain qualities on the light side and on the shadow side. There are certain motivations inside each archetype and each archetype, what I wanna bring out today, each archetype is self-policed by governing core values. And each core value assigned to each archetype helps keep that soul archetype in its optimal state and what it emanates so in those so basically you and i there's also on the spiritual side of things they are governing core 
values that will dictate how we align, how we're operating in those, if we're going to really be operating in the optimal aspect of our soul archetype versus us really defaulting more into side, the shadow side. And there's different ways when we get into the readings and looking at that to kind of see what the probability is for someone to kind of tilt more into their shadow side. You know, here's the thing, no one's in, numbers are exempt you know, none of us walk around all light, right? You know, so, but the thing is, is like, how often does someone dip into their shadow or is someone more primarily in their shadow versus in their, you know, versus in their light dimension of themselves in their archetypes? And so we begin to look at that. There's several factors to look at in the soul uh, profile. Some of the things, the energy position based upon the archetypes as combined, based upon the house alignment, based upon the situations that you know people face inside the, we call the journey paths we also capture that and see how that measures and we get that measurement from basically the house position and based off your soul matrix where your numbers fall at but those are more technical and more things you know they we get into the weeds of things but i just want to mention that that uh, in the scope of the living soul profile there's a lot of different information that comes across to help us understand but just for today you know, for tonight, uh, understand what I want to introduce is also introduce is the soul. Our soul archetypes have built in them some policing core values, and we call those governing core values to help each soul archetype to be in its maximum or its optimal state. Okay. So remember, there are four numbers with inside our uh, soul profile. And these four numbers based off our date of birth, we refer to them as your soul numbers. So there's four numbers that we identify as your soul numbers and these numbers shows up in your soul profile and they fall up under your moon archetype, under your uh, sun archetype, under your earth archetype, under your living soul archetype, okay? So going forward, I know some, it's funny, I had some people DM me, it's like, you know, hey, you know, will we need any, um, we should we have a notebook? And I said, that's a good, it's a good uh, question. So I encourage y'all that's really locking in to this, you know, to have your own living, you know, your soul to soul conversation uh, notebook. So that way, if you're taking notes or anything like that, or you're just trying to follow as the, as we go into more episodes, you, you begin to see certain things play out and unfold as you begin to take little key little notes from the things that I might share as we get into this. So here's the thing, if you are taking notes, I want you to uh, to draw four squares from left to right. Draw four squares left to right. And these squares are going to represent the four soul archetypes. Okay, once you write those four squares from left to right, four, se four separate squares, then on top of each square, you are going to write the astral archetype. So on top of the first square, you could put the letter M or put moon. The second square, you could put the letter S there or put sun. Or the third square, you could put E above that or put earth. And over the fourth square, you could put LS or you can write living soul. And I'm doing that so that way vision you can follow, follow what I'm saying in this episode. And I don't want to get semi-technical and you lose track to what I'm saying. So I'm just having you write these four squares out because inside these squares, I'm going to share with you an example, okay, of the soul archetype numbers where they align up under. And I'm going to talk about how it traces to the soul in you, okay? And some of you that know me personally, you know I love, you know, I love music, I love soulful music, I love you know, neo soul, jazz, and, and some of you know I love some Jill Scott. And Jill Scott just had a birthday, so I said, ah, you know, we can tap into Jilly from Philly and use her her soul profile as an example for us to follow. Again, I'm not gonna do a real reading on it, I'm just going to use her as a reference to just point to some traceability in her soul based off her soul profile and what we're going to be covering today. OK, 
Okay, so have those four squares um, right there and we'll begin to plug in the numbers. Matter of fact, we go ahead and plug in Jilly from Philly's number now. So Jill's numbers are four. So, put, so under the first square, put, you know, write four inside the square. The second square, right inside there, four again. So we see there's two fours. Then under the earth square, the third square, um, write in the number one. And then the fourth square, write in the number nine. Okay. And this is Jill Scott. And I think all of us know who Jill is. But this is Jill Scott's soul profile based off her birthday. Now, each of these numbers are assigned or they reveal certain aspects of our soul outline and how our soul expresses itself, how it moves, and so forth. Okay. So today, I want us to focus in on the soul. That's why today's episode, we're talking about the soul in you. The soul, I think a lot of us already know, is considered as the inner nature of us, the inner nature of you. The soul is also referred to the seat of the mind, will, and emotions. The soul is also that psychology of us, it's the psychology of you. The soul is also the transpersonal you. And we mention transpersonal. The transpersonal you is that part of you and myself that can move and think beyond our own personal limit and identity. In other words, the soul within us can move beyond our conditioning from life, from our own self limitations based on our own inhibitions that we have in our own selves or based on our own self perception. Despite all that, the soul is able to move beyond those limitations based off our own personal identity. Also, the soul is able to move outside of the body, right? It's trans, it's, it's have a trans migrating capability. A lot of us experience things in our dreams our soul traveling. A lot of us has experienced astral projection. Some of us are more conscious to actually project and we can do that. The bottom line is what I'm saying is, is one part of the soul. The soul is behind the experience in life. The soul is behind the experience of life. The soul is mobile. The soul is not just restricted to our physical body. The soul has an ability to move beyond that limitation and also move beyond the mental uh, limitation of the identity that we're trying to act out a lot of times. A lot of us, until we maybe have discovered our purpose or have that sense of awareness, we're probably more likely operating inside our false self. In other words, the expectations from others, the approval of others, the shaping from family background, environmental impressions, and et cetera. And if we haven't went through the process, we understand or got tuned with ourselves, like, yo, this is what I really am. This is who I really, you know, here on this earth to do, what I'm really trying to carry out. Then there's probably a high chance and probability that you have really fashioned your life around the false self and not around your true self, okay? And so when you start to really get more into your true self, you begin to move past some of the indoctrinations in those impressions that comes through the matrix, you know, upon us. And so as we begin to do that, it's interesting, we get a little more free with inside ourselves to the point where we start to recognize and become more sensitive to the soul within us. And as you become more sensitive to the soul within us, you start to understand that the soul is transpersonal. There's a transpersonal capability within yourself where your consciousness is even beyond how you see yourself, is basically what I'm saying. Okay. So that's the soul. Now, this is what I want everyone to key in on when I talk about the soul, because there's going to be a connection with me being able to trace the soul archetypes within the soul or that's representing the soul of us. And today we're using Jill Scott as an example. 
based off of her first soul numbers, 4419. The soul, check this out. The soul is also the animating principle within us. So it's that act, it's, it's that active anime, it's that animating principle that gives life to us, behind us. The soul is also the actuating cause of us. In other words, it's the cause behind who we are. It's not the effect behind who we are. It's the inner driving cause of who we are. It's the actualizing cause behind you and I. That is also the soul. Remember, the soul is the animating principle. So this is the game changer. Now, the soul is also the spiritual principle embodied in human form, because we're humans, or embodied in the universe. So the soul is actually the spiritual principle embodied in human form and also within inside the universe. Now, we're going to go a little more layers, a little more deeper on these to find definitions of the soul as it relates to the living soul, as it relates to me begin to start tracing uh, the outline of the soul that's active within us. So for clarity, within you and I's soul is an active animated principle. And we're able to have four different active anim animated principles that holds more gravity in us. Remember, there's four different soul numbers. There's four different archetypes. Now they can re they can be repeated. They could be doubled. They could be tripled. They could be quadruple, or it could be you know each individual number. So each number by itself is connected and enjoined with a principle. Remember, in the first episode, I said the living soul guidance numerology system is orchestrated around universal principles and laws we're not talking about man-made laws or anything like that we're talking about cosmic principles and laws okay and so when you revert and think back to that and looking at these very defining definitions of the soul as the animating principle and the actualized cause behind us or the spiritual principle embodied in human form and in the universe okay so without all this word what am i what's really saying first of all when i use the term soul archetype the soul archetype technically is an embodiment of an active principle okay and i'll revisit that so in other words the the, the soul is the first body which is not physical, right? It's not the physical body, but the soul is inside the body. So it's the first body, because we have more than one body. You know, that's, and so you might, I don't want to confuse you on that. I'm also a Thai yoga therapist and we understand there's different bodies. So that's where I'm coming from. But there's different bodies. But the spiritual principle is, in, is an embodiment in human form. So our soul is connected to a principle. Now, based on our soul profile, we have up to four primary different universal principles, or they can repeat themselves, they could triple themselves, they could be quadruple, that is actualizing or generating the cause behind our personality, behind how we're moving, behind what we're attracting in life, behind what we're engaging, behind our motives and intentions. In life, there are these principles that we're giving body to. So a soul archetype, I didn't want to give it to today, but since I'm talking about this, I kind of can lightly mention it. The soul archetype is basically the personification of a universal principle, okay? And the connection is when you start to look, you break down what the soul is, remember, it's an animating principle. So we're identifying the animating principle that's behind us. And we're looking, we look at Jill Scott's 
so profile today to recognize those animating principles and how they showing up and how they and how does it look in reference to her without going too deep into you know reading her okay so when we talk about the term human human system refers to a god mind so a spiritual principle is an embodiment of our god consciousness and we look at the term universe we split that word universe unifying verses and that symbolizes principle right and so the universe is 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 operating orchestrated by principles unifying principles and we acknowledge nine universal principles that that are primary that's influencing oscillating different forces and so forth throughout this whole life experience okay so what i want you to do is look at those four boxes i know i said a mouthful right there but in the bottom line is is that the soul is also an animated principle the soul is where we're trying to acknowledge and identify basically what i'm doing today is identifying the different principles that's shaping the soul of jill scott so jill scott's <clears throat> soul numbers are four four one nine all right and so the four the number four we identified it as the soul lover and we see that she has two of those the one we identify as the soul nurturer the nine we identify as the soul protector okay and so that is the soul archetype that's the embodiment of a principle so some you're like okay what's the principle well, the principles behind the soul lover is the principle of gender, the universal principle of gender. The, and we have two of those because she has two fours. So the principle of gender is very strong in her soul profile. When we go look at the number one, which is the soul nurturer, the principle that's behind the nurturer is the principle of vibration when we look at the number nine the principle behind the number nine is a lot of us have heard this the universal principle of cause and effect okay so going back to the principle of gender and i'm just going to summarize this real short so i'm not going to get into the whole definition of it and so forth but i'm going to talk about what it moves around Okay, so the principle of gender moves around harmony, stability, and preservation. Okay? And that's the principle of gender. So that's the, one of the things generating behind Jill Scott's soul profile. The principle of vibration, it moves around attraction and repulsion. The principle of cause and effect that moves around consequences and possibilities. Consequences and possibilities. Now like I can say everything in life is possible inside of the realm of cause and effect. If it is aligned and is not and is within those principles and laws, it's possible to achieve, it's possible to manifest. So, so Jill Scott has a combination of uh, the principle of gender, vibration, and cause and effect that's behind her soul numbers 4419. Now, we'll go over more and we're going to trace it even more. So as of right now, we just identified the animating principles behind Jill Scott's soul numbers and her soul profile. Okay? That's why I had you write these four boxes absolutely that way you kind of can follow and visualize now there's something that we refer to as a domain and so there's a domain in other words domain is the operative spiritual knowledge or the operative knowledge that oversees a particular area or has a different influence so with these principles that are behind these soul archetypes these soul archetypes are also or fall up their subject up under a domain. So the principle of gender 
the domain that kind of oversees that is referred to as pleasure in artistry. Interesting. Jill Scott is an artist. We can see that very strong in her. She has two four. So we see Jill Scott, we see she's very expressive, very sensual. She's also very in tune with her sexual energy. That is all in line with the principle of gender. That's falling up on the domain of pleasure and artistry. Um, also, that domain also highlights aesthetics, self-expression and happiness, uh, connection, relationships. That's that's the that's all falls under the pleasure and artistry domain. The other next domain that oversees the principle of vibration is commitment and personal growth. Okay. And if you draw your mind back to the number one, which is up under the earth archetype, the earth archetype is the sense of balance. So Jill Scott, uh, for her to feel a sense of balance, for her to feel comfortable in certain environments, there's a level of commitment and devotion and personal growth and a sense of nurturing that she really enjoys. And also, also feeling be able to be validated in the sense of acceptance. So she's she's going to feel very comfortable where she's accepted. She's going to be very comfortable where there's a sense of nurturing there. She's going to be very comfortable where she can evolve in personal growth. And she and it shows and people that's around in her environments. There's a level of dedication that she, that she desires to sense and feel from those in her close proximity. Okay, so that's what these numbers are showing. Also, the next domain that oversees the soul protector is conflict and security. So there's a so that oversees the ability to you know to engage in conflict resolution, um, a search for stability. So interesting. So we see the word stability jumps up twice based on the domains association. Uh, so there's a search of stability that falls apart that conflict and security also there's an aspect to stand for what it what it what it believes in even to the point of engaging in conflict to achieve it or to protect it so there's an aspect up under jill scott where she has no problem with engaging in conflict for what she stands for what she believes in okay so these are associated and assigned to her soul profile based on her soul numbers okay now what does that look like socially right what does that look like socially so i know i'm saying a lot well how does gender look socially the principle of gender look like socially well first of all anything in life you see that has duality in it that represents that's gender in the social form when you see the complementary of action that, you know, because our, our life consists, is experienced inside a sense of duality. So we don't understand gender, you know, the, the masculine and androgynous and feminine energies serve as a triune force inside the duality of life. And so that's what it, that's how it looks socially. Also, we recognize sexual energy. That's, that's in line with gender. We see that socially, we see it in, you know, just expression, right? We see it in music, see it on social media, etc. Gender relationships, a variety of type of relationships, different type, romantic relationships, tonic relationships, uh, work relationships, whatever that might look, that's the, that's the social look of gender. Also, embracing the alignment with your desires, people moving, right? People moving in their desires, people engulfing in their desires that's a social look of gender the social look of vibration we hear a lot of people nowadays talk about emotional intelligence well that's the social look of the principle of vibration showing itself in the social fabric of life the emotional awareness being able to transmute feelings one minute i'm mad another minute you know what i overreacted i'm, I'm gonna adjust my attitude so forth that's the principle of vibration in the social look of it okay and then you talk the social look of the principle of cause and effect the sense of accountability right holding things accountable 
having adaptive decision making, being able to adapt and change your decision making where it's necessary, um, being able to reflect on past actions, exercising mindful choices. So that's the social look of the principle of cause and effect that's behind the soul protector, of course. And so this is just the layout of Jill Scott's soul as we trace the animated principles behind each of her soul archetype numbers. Now, before I close out of this, I would like to tap into, well, I wanna highlight something about Jill. We know Jill is very radiant. You know, those double fours, the soul lover. Uh, one of the quality of soul lovers, they, hip, they have that hypnotic charm. We see that on Jill Scott here. She smiles, you know, like with me, I, I love me some Jill. Jill can smile at me and I'm gonna melt, right? Uh, her voice is angelic, it brings you in. When you listen to Jill Scott's music, it just makes you wanna harmonize, right? It makes you want to just to connect. She, she just, that's just her vibe. That's the vibe that comes through her, but that's her, that's her soul archetype emanating through, you know, through sound, okay? Um, then she's a touch, she's in touch with her emotions. She's in touch with emotions from the, from the four, the soul lover, but she's also very in touch with emotions with the one, the soul nurturer. The, and actually the one, the soul nurturer, it falls in line with the division of herself. In other words, the emotional part of ourself. The four falls in line with the sexual part of ourself. And the nine in Jill Scott's living soul, that falls in with the will, the willpower. Okay. So Jill, when we look at her soul, you know, her soul archetypes and her soul profile, we see that she's a mixture of the, the sexual part of herself, the emotional part of herself, and the willful part of herself. Okay. Now, with inside herself, or inside, let's say inside relationships, uh, when I look at the nine in reference in relation to the four, there's a gravity there that y'all might understand, but I know there's a gravity there. And that gravity is, it, it creates an imbalance. And so in probably in, in Jill Scott's relationships, she probably experiences cycles of emotional guardedness. And she probably experiences some fear of entrapment. So one thing we see right here in, in Jill Scott's soul profile layout is that she probably she's in relationships because she's the four is very about relationships. The four is very strong about individuality, connecting, deep connections. But because she has the nine in her soul profile, it may create an imbalance and that imbalance will look like emotional guardedness. So Jill's a part of Jill Scott where she's very emotionally guarded. She likes to, she people, she likes to connect deeply, but she's emotionally guarded until she feels very comfortable, right? Till she feel till she sees a level of what? Commitment, a level of nurturing, uh, a level that she feels like she can continue to grow that she's not gonna feel stifled when she's getting that that's that that's her one that's her one that falls up under the earth then she might be able to open up and she can feel more comfortable but just due to the makeup in her soul profile she probably has a lot of periods inside relationships where she's emotionally guarded and so that shows up in like mistrust um, or just um, just being selective with vulnerability or trying to protect vulnerabilities and, and so forth. And, and none of us really exempt from none of this stuff, but this is just some things that I just see real quick that just jumps out based off of these numbers right here. Okay, and then also the fear of entrapment. One thing about an artist, and let me share this. One thing, I, I since I've been doing this for a couple of years, I've been noticing an interesting trend and I'm still paying attention. I noticed with artists or entertainers, they they have either the four, the five, a nine, 
or a six in their soul profile. And based off of observing, definitely see a lot of nines, a lot of fours associated with artists. We see Jill Scott, she's an artist, she has a four and a nine. So it makes sense why she's a great actor. You know, she's a great poet and very expressive in her music. It fits her. Some other notable um, entertainers that you might know, like Prince. Prince, he has a six in his soul profile and a nine. He's actually a soul protector like Jill Scott. Now, it's interesting. Here's a perfect example. Prince, when he was operating in his soul protector as a nine, you saw a lot of him exuding the androgynous energy in his earlier career. Then you start seeing him become very um, uh, an advocate, right? Very strong about the truth and the quest of truth and sharing that truth, being expressive about it, and then also trying to hold people accountable. Well, guess what? With Prince, he has the six, seven, five, and the nine. And so Prince in his latter year, he was operating the five. The five is about advocating and being about the truth. His seven was about um, challenging and holding things accountable. And six is that intuitive part, that androgynous part. And then nine is also that that's expressive part. What's interesting with the nine is because the nine is very in tune with his body. It's the performing it has that it has. I'm going to get into the nines deeper later on. But it's very interesting. Why? I'm going to explain why the nines are connected to a lot of entertainers, a lot of actors. Jonathan Major has a nine in his stuff. Uh, actually, uh, Chris Brown has a nine. <laughs> In his uh, Rouse Tresvant from New Edition, he has a nine. You know, in in his profile, um, actually, uh, I believe Whitney Houston as well. She has, I think, a double nine. So I'm just seeing this 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 interesting trend, just of different celebrities and, and stuff like that that. They share similar soul archetype numbers. Now they express differently because based off of the combination. So when we look at Jill Scott, she has that she operates as a soul protector as a nine, but it'll look totally different than how Prince operating his. Jill Scott, you see a lot, there's a lot of feminine energy, a lot of feminine. I'm actually when you look at the energy position of her, very strong feminine energy, obvious. But then she also has a strong neutral position. And I'll get into what those, what those really mean, how that shows up, how it influences our personality inside our soul archetypes. So Jill Scott is just the embodiment. Uh, when you put all that stuff together, you know, she's a very connective person, which probably shows why she's very protective about her personal space. Because her personal space, she's willing to just, to connect deeply. And because she probably knows it about herself, she has to, you know, be more safeguarding of that. But she's very expressive, very radiant. She has this hypnotic charm about her that mesmerizes a lot of people. I think a lot of, that's why a lot of us are loyal to her music and what it represents. Okay, so I know this second episode, I probably shared a lot, but I really want to, I'm just laying a lot of the, the groundwork so everyone, as you get into it, you can just understand these different aspects of the living soul. So what we did today is really talk about what that soul is. And the soul is the animating principle. And I identify the animating principle behind the soul of Jill Scott. We all have key certain animating principles operating inside all of us. And it's going to express itself differently based off our soul combination, based off the experiences that we're having, based off of um, what people are bringing and projecting to us, it will incite or arouse a certain level of response from the soul archetype influence that's behind all of us. Okay, so I look forward to touch back down with episode three. So today was episode two, and we talked about the soul in you. And we used Jill Scott as an example to get a, just a little glimpse of the soul in her. Of course, I didn't go super deep, you know, even in reading it, but this is just to trace the animated principle behind her 
that shapes how she moves and what she expressed and what we witness. Remember, the soul also is the activating cause behind us. So we see, the, I'm sorry, the actualizing cause. So we see what's actualizing this expression behind her. All we see that she represents is she's showing the embodiment, the visible display, the, the perceivable reality of key principles that shows itself inside the soul and the soul has this archetype there's certain you know qualities that's inside that archetype and when it's mixed with other archetypes it brings about this combination that shows across an expression and what we witness in the social realm of life and so we see joe scott um matches of course what her soul profile is of so i just want to draw that connection in the most simplest way that i was able to so hopefully it came across in a digestible way and just listen to it over and over again this is available so again so as i close out this was episode two the soul in you and if you want to support join our text community just text one 475 and then type soul to soul so one 475 then type soul to soul capitalize the s s-o-u-l put the number two capitalize s s-o-u-l all right and then if you want to support when you text that if you want to become a soul to soul conversation supporter you can just go ahead and click that link that's shared in that text okay you also go get alerts you know different motivational inspirational or some soul guidance type of maybe some random text that will come across to you and also give you a heads up on alert when i will be sharing more content while i'll be going live or posting another podcast for you to check out and to download to listen i appreciate everybody's support keep everything easy choose to be calm and well loved to touch back down again